Hello everyone and welcome to another video in our series of qualitative method and in this video we'll be looking at uh, statistical process control actually it's a series of three videos and the first one we're going to be looking at the X bar and R chart under SPC or statistical process control and there will be another two videos in this series looking at the P chart and the C chart so let's start with the X bar and R chart and as you know this is the formula for them so we have the center line formula for the X bar chart which is the mean of all means for the R chart is the mean of all ranges and then we have the upper and lower control limit formula based on the table that I put over here because it makes it easier for us to find the values and I will show you how to find the values and let Excel find the values for you. So we collected 10 samples over 10 days or 10 hours or 10 weeks depending on the problem, it doesn't matter. And then on each day or each time interval we selected three samples, so N is 10, K is 3, and we're going to look at how do we find the mean of all means, the range, and all of this using just Excel which saves you doing the calculation yourself. So first we're going to start with x bar and as we know we need the average function to find the average of these three. Okay, don't worry about the red thing. I will show you what this means and I'm just going to drag it to find the average for the other samples. For the range we're going to take the maximum function, so max so I'm going to select the maximum of these three and subtract them from them the minimum. That's what the range, the maximum value minus the minimum value. And similarly, I'm just going to come over here and drag to fill in all these values. So now I have the X bar, the average of all samples and the range for all samples. I'm going to come over here and find the center line which is the average of what? Of all averages. So I'm going to select all of these. That's the center line for the X bar. And I'm going to repeat that for the range. So I'm going to type it average of all these ranges. Okay, so that's our center line for both the X bar and R. To find the lower control limit and the upper control limit, as you see here, I need A2 and D3 and D4 from the table. So instead of coming here and see, okay, R K equal 3, so I'm going to come over here to K equal 3 and select the value for A2 and D3 and D4. I'm going to let Excel do that for me. And to do that, <clears throat> I'm going to use the VLOOKUP function. And it tells me here, looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table, and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. So I'm going to press on it, and it tells me first to look up which value. What's the lookup value I want? I want k equal 3. So Excel is going to look and it's stable here that I will specify now because it asked me for the table array. So I'm going to select all these table. And then it's going to ask me for what? The column index that you want to return. So I want D3. So I'm going to start with K. This is column index 1, 2, 3, four, five, six. So I'm going to put six. Finally, it's going to ask me to, do you want exact match or approximate match? Here it doesn't matter because I'm looking for a value, not for a sentence or letters or a word. Then it doesn't matter if you put true or false. I will just put true. And once I press enter, you will see that it gets me the value which is 
happened to be zero. So let's repeat that with D4, and you will see that it's going to give me the value in the table. So VLOOKUP, still looking for the value 3, same table array. So I'm going to select all of this. Okay, still the column index. Sorry, the column index now is 7 because I'm looking for D4. And then I'm going to say true. The minute I press, you see, it gets me this value over here. So this works now for any problem that you're solving. If let's happen the subgroups now is seven, you have seven in each sample, all you have to do is come over here and change the number three to seven. So Excel is going to come to number seven over here and get you the value right away. I'm just going to repeat this finally with A2. V look up. I'm looking for the value three. And this table, one more time, I'm going to select it instead of typing K12 T25. And this time I'm looking for A2, which is second column. So I put two and true, and it gives me the A2 value. Okay, so now that I have D3 and D4 in A2, I can find the lower control limit and the upper control limit. Let's start with X bar. For X bar, the lower control limit is the mean of all means, which is the center line, minus A2 times R bar. And the upper control limit is the same thing, but it's what? Plus A2 times R bar. See the values here change? I will show you what this means in a minute. For the R bar, the lower and upper control limit are basically D3 times R bar, D4 times R bar. Now I know D3 is zero, but I'm just gonna write the formula anyway, just in case in other problem it wasn't zero. So just multiply this by the value over here and D4 times R bar, sorry. So now I did all the calculation and why this here has a red and a yellow value. Remember the rules differs from one problem to another, from one business to another, but one of the common rule is if you have any value above the upper control limit or below the lower control limit, then it's out of control, so beyond. So instead of me going and checking, do I have value less than 0 0.63? Do you have value greater than 2.57? I will let Excel do that. And how do I do that? I will select this value here, and I'm gonna go to conditional formatting. And I will get say, set new rule. And in the set new rule, I'm gonna choose format only cells that contains what? A cell value, that's greater than, greater than what? I will choose the upper control limit. So I'm gonna choose a cell value that contains greater than this one here. And I'm gonna go to format and say, okay, For this cell that's a greater than the upper control limit, I want to make it red and make the font, for example, 
Yeah. When I click OK, Excel will look over here. Any value that's greater than this one here will make it in this format. And it tells me which one is beyond the upper control limit. The same idea, I will choose less than and pick the lower control limit. But I'm going to choose different format to distinguish between which one is lower, which one is higher. And that's it. When I click OK, it will do that for me. I'm not going to click OK because I already have set the rules for this. So I'm just going to show you the rules. See, if the cell value is greater than, display this. If the cell value is less than this value, make this format. So which means what? This value here, I know right away that it's greater than the upper control limit. And these two values are lower than the lower control limit, which means for the X bar, it's out of control. I did the same for R, but there is no red or white or blue or green or any other format because there is no upper or lower control limit. So all of them are within control limit for the R chart. See, there is no value less than zero. There is no value greater than 2.44, obviously. So the conditional formatting will do everything for me. So if I have to do X bar chart on R chart, everything can be done using Excel, finding the averages, finding the range, finding the X bar bar and R bar. Let Excel find out using the VLOOKUP, the values from here. And then let Excel do the calculation. And not only that, but also let Excel determine if I have a point beyond the control limit lines, either above the upper control limit or below the lower control limit. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos on Excel and SPSS and all the statistical analysis.